We are on a mission, a mission to save and revitalize independent pharmacy. On the Catalyst Podcast, we dive into current events that are shaping how pharmacists approach their patients and their businesses. Fuel your passion for pharmacy one conversation at a time. Four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Welcome to the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Key, president of Pioneer X, and today I'm here with Marsha. Hi, I'm Marsha Bivens, director of marketing for Pioneer X. Today, super excited to introduce our guest, David Racetrick. He is the president and co-founder of Envision America. So I'm super pumped about this guest, about you today, because um, I came across your product at NCPA, I believe it's Orlando, and I had just visited a pharmacy that I, you know, I always look around, I'm like, what are you doing this? How are you doing that? And I'm like, why are there pennies glued to the bottles? And I looked and I was like, heads and tails. And she explained it to me that that was for her vision impaired patients, that they would fill on it. And if it was heads, then that was their morning dose. And if it was the tails, then they knew that that was their bedtime dose. And then I came across your product, I think it was like a month later after visiting that pharmacy. And I'm like, oh, I know the pharmacy that needs this. I know the pharmacy that needs this. And I was so excited. And I took it over to Jeff and development. And now here we are today. Yeah, I remember talking to you the first time and, uh, and you being excited about it. Uh, that is the epitome of what uh, the way people find out about it is it's kind of word of mouth. And, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people would do other things. You know, they would take a prescription and write a C on the top in like a Sharpie marker for Coumadin, you know, because they might have a little bit of vision. Right. Mm -hmm. You might have just enough to read a Sharpie marker and and or putting rubber bands on bottles. You know, two rubber bands is this medication. One is that. And mm -hmm. uh that's how this product was born, essentially errors with medications, you know, and uh, those types of, of solutions just didn't work for folks. Yeah. Right. And I've, and I've come across other products that try to help with vision impaired, whether it be like a, a special cap that puts it on their phone that talks to them or, and I'm like, but, ha but I mean, you're putting an extra programming that, you know, if somebody else opens that bottle accidentally, you know, that messes up everything. Right. And so how, how did you get into um, vision impaired labeling? Yeah, let's, let's hear the history. Let's, let's hear about oh, the kickoff wow. on a, this. What a great place to start. Let's start at the beginning. So the, the very beginning, at least of the product, comes um, from our initial product that we developed. Okay, so I've got vision impairment in the family, uh, okay. my my dad has or had two brothers, both with what's called retinitis pigmentosa. Okay. R, it's short is RP. Retinitis pigmentosa is a slow and gradual kind of tunneling of vision until right around 35 or so, there's, there's nothing left but a mm. little pinhole. Okay. And so both of my uncles, one older and one younger than dad, uh, had retinitis pigmentosa. Um, Skip dad, luckily, didn't affect him. Um, but having vision impairment in the family, it all started with that. And really, if you want to go back to the beginning, uh, even outside of pharmacy, we developed a barcode scanner whereby uh, that was our first product. It was called ID-Mate. We've since um, we don't have the product anymore. We've discontinued it, but it allows someone to scan a barcode and it speak back the information about a product. So a barcode like a UPC on a product. An I, individual had, I had childhood books that were like that before they came out with the leapfrog pen. I, it was a barcode. It was a book with a little barcode under each thing and you ran the little swiper across and it. And it moved it. And right. It was a weird like little pen like thing. Uh, but it looked like a mouse. My mom found it. I haven't sent you that picture yet. My mom has cleaned out and found a bunch of my old toys from the 80s in it. I, she found those books. And I was like, I know that. Thing. I remember that. It was so funny because you yeah. would run across like it was supposed to giggle. And it was a really weird giggle. 
<laughs> kind of creepy almost. Just And probably recorded, and that's the way our first product was. Um, we took, I, all right, so I'm quasi-technical. I I was able, we were, we were playing cards as a family a lot, right? Mm-hmm. So um, both my uncles are visually impaired. One could read Braille, one could not. So we tried Braille cards that didn't work too well. You know, one uncle. The, the other kind of funny thing about it is my, the uncle that could read Braille, we always wondered whether he was cheating as he's dealing. You know, he kind of <laughs> yeah. feels your card and oh, toss yeah. it over to you. Yeah, ace of spades, uh, you know. <laughs> so anyway, so playing cards was kind of difficult, and we were a big card-playing family. So I took this clunky laptop. Back then, there were big, thick things, big, thick laptop, and got some software to work. How I did this, I don't know, because, you know, I just maybe – believe that I could do it. And I actually coded in, in basic this program that would scan a barcode, search a database and play back a recording. So that's how it started. And so what we did, we tried it as we're playing cards. And so we put an earphone in one of my uncles, we put barcodes on the backs of cards and we did this. And this was really the beginning of Envision America. Because the uncle that could read Braille, he was also part of the Department of Rehabilitation in the state of Illinois. And um, uh, he said, hey, I've told some people about it. you got to have them come over and see this thing. So we went to his house. A bunch of people from Department of Rehab came over and said, this is great. Can you make it small and can you make it cheap? And so my dad and I said, hey, well, let's let's take a go of this. So we took uh, 30 grand, borrowed from grandma, and we started in the basement of his house. Wow. So we, start, we, we, started, we started small, um, and actually he started first. I had another job, and it was just a slow process of once we introduced that barcode scanning product, um, we knew we had something because we went to the first – vision impairment shows and people were standing in the aisles four deep just trying to see or understand what this new thing was and that was our first id mate barcode scanner wow very cool Um, so what was the favorite what was the favorite card game uh well it was we we had a couple weird ones regular poker like you know okay um you know, five card draw and seven, five card stud or whatever. But we also played a game called Brew. It's called Boo Ray. It's kind of a wild card game. Okay. How many people know that game? And I uh, haven't heard it's of it. It's a southern. And I think we, they play that a lot in southern Louisiana. Boo, I've never Boo-ray. heard of it. Yeah, okay. Boo Ray. Um, and then we also played like three card gut, um, match the pot game. So my uncles were uh, pretty astute card players and same with my dad. Um, and we played cards a lot as a family. We're borderline banned from not from playing from not doing card games because we get aggressive, and there's yeah. name calling. But there's like one particular game that's like okay, we can't play that because Mackie beats everybody. And um, yeah, her daughter dominates. It's a hand eye, hand eye it's knowledge really, coordination, and it's she a, just obliterates everybody. Yeah, like the cards get dealt, and she's like, and blitz, I'm done. And it's like we just got started. Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of, that's like gin, you know, you just lay your cards out and mm-hmm. what? I, I don't even have my cards organized yet. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. My mom was like that. It's like, she'd sit there and collect cards and all of a sudden she's out all at once. And it's like, we're still trying to organize all these cards. Yeah. Maybe it was a gambling thing for us. I, I don't know. We just <laughs> loved to gamble on, you know, just throw your money in a pot and see who see who wins it so we still do some but you know lately it's been a little bit less uh playing cards want to get back to it all right so that was so the initial one was a barcode device okay all right so where do we go from there yeah so the way really we started to get into pharmacy is a lot of these little id mate devices these barcode scanners were being sold into the va department of veterans uh, administration we couldn't figure it out. They were just 
flying off the shelves. And so we come to find out that a lot of the VIST coordinators who kind of set up the services for any blinded veteran were justifying purchase of our product for use on medications that the VA would provide. And so uh, we kind of scratched our head and said, okay, with that product, you still had to scan a barcode and you had to hold the record button and say, this is amoxicillin 250 milligrams. Works great, but you need someone to tell you that. You need someone there. Um, so we kind of stepped back and said, wow, this is something that wouldn't it be much better if pharmacy could just deliver a product that was easily available. So that's where we started. And we okay. actually first started with uh, 2D barcodes or kind of like the QR code. Okay. Um, and this is way back in like 2001, 2002. Um, so long time ago. And, and we um, said, okay, let's, let's go to a show and let's look at how we can d develop a barcode scanner to do this instead of the ID mate, which is like a license plate. It's like a, a regular barcode is just the numbers, right? It's right. QR code actually stores data. So we started to get keyed in at this show on this newer technology called RFID or NFC. You might know about it yep. uh, today as, as NFC. And so <clears throat> sure enough, we found uh, something with the capacity that maybe we could uh, put enough data on a QR code and have a, rather than a visual line of sight to a barcode, but have a wireless read. And so that got us thinking, we took a bunch of brochures home and sure enough, we uh, found a developer and um, started the process of developing the very first script talk, uh, which is the talking or audible prescription. And so, but the whole thing was to solve the problem initially of the VA, uh, you know, we wanted to get um, an opportunity there. So we took prototypes uh, into the VA, into the, um, um, the director of pharmacy in the VA, and kind of the same thing, serendipity, uh, convergence, I don't know what it was, but they said, hey, we've been getting a lot of folks coming in asking about something simpler that we can deliver. Nice. So we showed it to them and uh, they said, hey, great, we're going to do a pilot. And uh, in 2003, even back then, and this is even well before any retail pharmacies started doing it, more than eight years, nine years before, um, they said, okay, we're going to put this nationwide throughout all the VA hospitals. Wow. And so that's, uh, that's how we kind of started with the very first script talk. Nice. So you started in the VA and now you're mm -hmm. in independent pharmacies. So yeah. um, what would you, what is your spread now? Like how many pharmacies would you say you're in? Oh gosh. Um, I should have probably got the exact statistics, but somewhere probably in the, it, it, if you count all the pharmacies that are doing it or will do it probably in the 10,000 range pharmacies that are doing it. Um, some of the some of the ones that are doing it, like Walmart, for example, they don't necessarily do it. We are, we're in about 2,000 Walmarts. Uh, they don't necessarily put it in every store immediately, but if they get a request, they put it in. Right. And so, so if they get a patient who needs it that comes in, they'll put it in that store. Right. Right. And so the way the product works now, at least on the retail side, is this this is the device right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, that's it. I don't know if you can see it. This device is free to the patient. Doesn't cost anything to the patient. We provide it on loan. And as soon as they're done using it, they send it back. So that's just, a, it's kind of a loaner thing for them. So we'll get a request and um, it's called our pharmacy freedom program. Okay. okay. And that means that if they go to, for example, an independent or they go to Walmart originally and they want to move to an independent, if we find there's a closer independent or somebody that they want there, 
we will switch them over to that. They can go to any pharmacy that offers script type. So, huh. so the, the business the, model then, the patient's getting it for free. Was the, the business model is just the, the pharmacy pays per script or pays per month or what is that? How does that work? Yeah, the pharmacy pretty well pays just per script. They, they buy that little label. So <clears throat> there is the little RFID label okay. that's on the bottom. And, and so that's, that's what we do. We make accessible labels. Um, it started with script talk and now we do large print. We do Braille labels. Um, so we're, we're, we're getting into translation. It's just, it's, it's a whole broadening of the idea that a lot of different patients need their information in a different format. And it's not always in this little tiny label around the bottle. It, 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 uh, with tiny print, um, whether it's audible or whether it's braille or whether it's, and these are primarily vision impaired, even translation, they need that information in a different format. Are there, um, some of the insurance companies that cover, I mean, is sometimes is the, is the pharmacist always doing this or is there a code Good, they can transmit? To ask that. that really is what kind of took us so long to get to the retail market because we tried. We tried to see if we could get this device, you know, that they would have in the home covered as under, under CMS, as a code, as a coded device, uh, as DME. And let me just tell you, we spent many years and a lot of money trying to figure that one out. And when you don't have a, another product that's already covered that is similar, they just scratch their heads and say, we don't even know how to approach it. <laughs> huh. Yeah, you, you wonder, if, though, if they could be like, you know, because there are, well, especially on so medical side, you can add complexities to a diagnosis and get more money. On the pharmacy side, sometimes there are codes like the, the place of residence or things like that, and that adjusts the price of the prescription. You know, you wonder if you couldn't get some third parties to pay a, a an incremental based on a visual impaired. Yeah, now pharmacy, there are a lot of pharmacies that are attempting to get reimbursement for what they provide. So I, I'm not really in that. On that side, uh, pharmacies are working kind of independently to kind of cover the extra label cost for that. What we tried to do originally, and, and you know, we had the VA model, right? So right. the VA just buys them and provides them to the patient, um, which is great for the VA. They're kind of a closed loop healthcare system. Um, it's fine and dandy. But when it comes to pharmacy in the retail side, um, Really, uh, the difficulty that we had was patients said, hey, I, I don't know which pharmacies are offering this. Uh, you know, should I buy the device? If I buy the device, can I get it covered? It was just a, a mess. So huh. we kind of eliminated all that and we said, OK, let's just take, say, time out and uh, just provide the device on loan. And um, and and then really they can choose the pharmacy that they want to go to um, based upon their needs. So what made you develop the, I mean, you've got the device now that is the RFID um, mm -hmm. chip that sits on the device. And then what made you, how did you get into like also printing Braille labels? Cause that's, that one was the really, I'm like, how do you print Braille? It's just a natural kind of, at least to us, it was a natural progression because what we had to do and, and how we integrate with Pioneer is we have our own what's called scriptability. Scriptability mm -hmm. is the suite of, of labels that is one software kind of does it all. So they can do any one of these. They can do script talk, Braille. They can do the script view large print booklet that I'll show you yeah. in a minute. Really, uh, there were folks that were asking for, hey, I, I don't want a talking device. I don't want to carry around a talking device. But I can read Braille. 
I can't read large print. I need uh, Braille. Mm -hmm. That's what my preferred method is. And um, so we so we offer different styles for different needs. It, now, is Braille most, pretty com compressed? Like if I'm thinking about amoxicillin, 50 milligrams, take one tablet twice daily with food, is that like the whole bottle's covered in bumps? Or is that yeah. more compressed like a Chinese character where you get this swiggle, 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 boom, and that's like means a sentence? It is still, con they use what's called grade two contracted Braille, which is contracted, but surely not enough. We, you know, it really does take up a lot of space um, on a bottle. And so what we do is we have a brailler that will just print one line at a time. And then they just place that one line on over kind of a clear overlay over the top of the, of the bottle. I know you're probably not going to be, be able to see the bumps on this, but that, uh, um, is, uh, just another label style that we do. And, and um, so there's a printer, the printer prints a clear label that does the mm -hmm. braille. And I guess in printer, it just pushes it up. It makes the bumps. It's, it embosses the bumps into the kind of, you know, the Dymo labelers? The, uh -huh. remember oh, the old my style gosh, one? yes. You, it's, it's really that same type of tape okay. uh, that you would use with those Dymos where you, remember those mm -hmm. that you'd rotate yep. around to the letters? Yep. So same same type of thing, um, but it's a actual brailler that embosses the little pin um the, the six dots essentially of braille into the material. And then it's just a matter of peeling it off and putting it around the bottle. Yeah. A lot of folks that do braille just really do one line, like what the prescription is, what the, you know, to actually do all the instructions or any of that is really takes up a lot, much too much space. Right. Some do. So then how are we, so then explain to me, I don't know who, which one of you would be able to tell me. So then what about the patient education piece of it? Yeah, that's, that's, that's really the problem with Braille. And really the, the, really the, um, Braille is very important to the vision impaired community, but a very small number of people can actually read Braille. Um, right. Braille is something, it's like a language, like a foreign language. If you don't constantly use it you lose it like morse code yeah. so you might have people that are very 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 literate in braille you might have uh, you know folks that are but um they're they're few and far between but it's still an important medium mm -hmm. for folks that are visually impaired you know so what about any kind of you know you got a lot of um talking devices alexa google I wonder how you would, those aren't exactly NFC devices. Uh, I wonder how, any, any kind of thought about how you might work with one of those? We've, we've worked on it, and where we kind of uh, cited is, you know, this device right here is, um, is great for individuals that don't have a mobile phone. But okay. those that have mobile phones and accessibility on mobile phones is really great these days. Um, you know, your your phone can uh, turn on accessibility where you use swipes okay. and different gestures on the phone mm -hmm. that will allow you to navigate around the screen with with audio output. Nice. Yeah. So. Both Android and iOS do support NFC, and they will read those. So we have apps, too. So really, this device now is for in any individual that either wants the convenience of having a, their script talk station wherever they keep their medications. You know, they might keep them in a basket or... Uh, or somewhere that is kind of a centralized place, they take their script talk out, they read their meds. Um, you know, with the, with the advent of NFC on iOS and on Android, they can travel with it. They can use their phone to do it. Makes you seem so, really smart selling the labels now instead of the devices, right? Right. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> 
ultimately, ultimately the model is the same for us. Yep. We, we develop, we develop the readers that read these labels. And so, I mean, I, I kind of think that, uh, you know, putting electronic labels and, and a lot of folks do pharmacies do like in tracking prescriptions, um, whether it's um, controlled substances and there's others that use inventory control. A lot of mail order pharmacies use it for actually tracking a prescription throughout the whole process in mail. But uh, once you begin to put electronic tags on prescriptions, uh, you can do a lot of things with them. Um, and so we're hoping we're just at the very beginning of electronic tags and or um, RFID on prescriptions that can do a whole lot, a whole slew of things, um, including d dispensing, uh, in-home dispensing, and those sort of things. Where, you know, you know, I think the be-all, end-all kind of coup de gras in my mind uh, of that would be, you know, you know, plugging in a um, cartridge and having that cartridge recognize this is my lisinopril and I take it at 10, two and five or whatever. And, and it knows when to dispense and the individual in home can dispense those. So that's where my mind goes and has always been with this technology with electronic labels. So what's next for uh, Envision? Like, so how are you working with like um, patients who they've got to do the box, the like the Parada roll and that kind of thing, the blister mm -hmm. package or any of that? How are you working with that? So we work with them. We work. So in, in addition to our software being able to label just one prescription, we can label a box with multi doses in, in a box. Uh, any blister packs, we work with blister packs. Um, it really is just a matter of providing um, the information about what is what they can expect in that package. Mm -hmm. That'll help them take those medications. So how big's the company? How many employees? And We have 28. Wow. So I don't know if you know, we moved from Illinois. We're down in Florida now. Okay. Um, we moved from Illinois in 2015 and we brought six employees. So we're okay. now nearly 30. And so we're growing fast and it's just uh, kind of exploding. And uh, Marcia, you're asking what's kind of new. Where we see a lot of growth, not only on the electronic tag side, but on our what's called script view side, which is, I, I just really want to quickly show it. Sure. Um, it's just a booklet style label that goes on to a medication and it's firmly stuck on medication. All of our, all of our labels, even the electronic label, they're, they're auxiliary labels, meaning it doesn't take the place of the standard legal label. Okay. Right. So this would be extra over and above the legal label, but it'll put all that information in a large print, high contrast, um, label. And so that's called script view. What, what kind of device does that print off of? It just, a it's a, uh, thermal direct thermal, uh, labeler. Okay. So if you picture this now, uh, you picture a labeler that just prints a big, long tag, Okay. a big, long label, almost like a luggage tag in an airline. Mm -hmm. And it folds up into book into pages. There's a little clip that goes through it. And it ties it down, it binds it essentially, and you stick it on the medication. Okay. So you fold it and then you bind it. Yeah, there's like right. a little rubber band that kind of goes around it. Yeah, that's that's the so it guy secures, right here. and then it just accordions out so they can read the full thing. Huh? Yeah, it just kind of goes out like that. So on a, on a pill bottle, it'll work fine. It'll work on flat packs. It'll work on really anything. But the neat thing about this is. Really, this is great for anything that it just gives more real estate for labeling. You know, when you when you've got a small bottle, you need more space for either larger print. We offer uh, now we offer what's called dual language labels, right? Which not only puts the, uh, for example, Spanish on the label, but right underneath it, you've got English. When, Okay. The reason that's important is not only someone English 
can help that patient take that medication, see what they're taking, understand what it is. But also the pharmacist feels a lot better putting out a medication that has two languages. Yeah. Um, now, are y'all translating right that? Label. Or do you have uh, yes. some built-in SIGs yeah. that you have? Or you actually... We translate, and that's that's another big part of it. Uh, there's a lot of states that are, are saying, hey, this is important to make sure that patients can read their medications. And What's the business model on the labels, the bigger labels? Yeah, uh, just the labels. Okay. I mean, we, we, we provide the labels and the printers to do it. Um, and then we, we provide the translation service. Huh. Um, when, how long have you been out it? with a little booklet? Is that, I guess that, you that was one of the before. first, yeah, because when I first saw him, it, um, it was the three different options. So it was the device, which y'all hadn't gotten cleared um, at the time. And then um, there was the uh, the Braille, which I was like, that's really awesome. And then uh, the the well, bigger font. Print. Yeah. So so why the move to Florida from Illinois? Because it's oh my God. warm. Well, I mean, besides the fact that it's warmer. <laughs> and it's Florida. You guys, are, you guys are in Texas, aren't you? Uh-huh. We are in Texas, yeah. So, so you kind of, you know, understand at least in Illinois, it was one of those things year after year, it started to go up my spine. Uh, right around October, you just got that, this fear of winter coming. And uh, it's a fear. Winter is coming. Just saw, a game of, saw a Game of Thrones and says, I'm getting out. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we don't want to. Uh, we don't want the snow anymore. So where in so Florida? We're right around Tampa Bay area. Nice. So not only did we move here, great, great uh, sports teams. We've got uh, great sports got teams like now. the Cubs. I see behind you there. That that's not a Florida team. I realize that's not a Florida team. <laughs> that's my allegiance. That's your but, allegiance. Uh, okay. They they just sold out their whole team, so it really doesn't matter anymore. Um, but I love the Cubs, but the Tampa Bay Rays are definitely high on my uh, – next on my list, I should say. Anything for, uh, for uh, recreation in Tampa? Are you a fisherman or a scuba diver? Scuba love, diver? Lo- do both. Uh, not enough of either. Um, How yeah, is we, the scuba in Tampa? Not good in Tampa, but we have to go down to the Keys to oh, do Oh, you that. go to the Keys. Oh, yeah. Okay. The Keys, yeah, I, it's, that one was awesome. Have you? Do you scuba dive? I do. We, we do. Have you been down to uh, Penna Camp or the uh, the sanctuary down here in the Keys? Like I have not been Key in the Largo? sanctuary. No. We, yeah, we we've, went off. Uh, where did we go? It uh, was the Keys. Um, uh, I'd have to look at my dive log, and I could tell you. We went to, like, uh, two different reefs. I think one of them was Horseshoe, um, maybe. Yep. Um, saw a nurse shark. Um I stuck my GoPro in a puffer fish's face and he kind of played around with my camera, um, which was kind of cool. He looked like he was showing off. And then um, a black tip swam right over me and the master diver. Did you know it? Well, (laughs) at this point, yeah. Well, (laughs) not at the point that it would have mattered. The master diver turned around because she was going to take my, take my camera and go like, Hey, I'll take a picture. And then she starts going shark. And I'm like, where and I turn around and this thing just goes whoop and I'm like oh yeah would, would, it was really yeah. cool not at, not at the point saw it but not at the point it would have mattered <laughs> yeah I, I same thing happened to me it's scuba diving is great for really not knowing what's really happening around you until it's over uh, same thing it's like did you you know we're in the boat and did you see that eight foot shark swim right right above you no I didn't see it <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I didn't see it. Have yeah, you done any? Yeah, the Keys is beautiful. Yeah, the Keys was really beautiful. I mean, multiple beautiful reefs. Um, yeah. And like just you could swim into a school of fish and they didn't care. Yeah. But so nothing in Tampa. Because I've seen some dive sites, I guess, off of maybe 10 miles off site where they There's have wrecks. Where they have uh, sunk okay. in a bunch of statues that's making a reef, uh, something of heroes. Okay. Gosh. I don't know where that is, but, uh, and maybe that's just because I haven't searched around here just thinking it's not because it's, you know, we've got, we got great beaches here. That's one of the reasons why we came here, but, um, you know, that's just a lot of sand. So you don't have a lot of real geographic 
not a lot of fish like you do down in the Keys. Gotcha. But uh, have you done any aquarium dives? Never, never. My brother-in-law did that uh, in co- in college. He's uh, in was in marine biology, and mm-hmm. uh, he used to feed the, uh, you know, in I think it was Shedd Aquarium in Chicago would feed the uh, yeah. fish. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. Yeah, it's it's an interesting experience. I mean, it, each of them are different. Yeah. Yeah, but it was pretty much just this kind of feeling that, you know, and we know we wanted to get out of Illinois and get to some place that's better, uh, you know, has more quality of life, really. And yeah. we love the area. It's, it's it's really nice. So so who is we? Tell us about your family. So, yeah, my wife, Maureen, uh, and I have four kids. Okay. Uh, wow. all, of them, all of them are pretty old now, um, hence, hence me and the gray beard. Uh, the, uh, so my, my youngest daughter's 20, my oldest, uh, son is 28. So anybody in the, anybody work in the company keeping in the family? Yes. My, my son actually is, uh, graduated three years ago in law at DePaul. Okay. And now he works in our legal department. Interesting. Okay. That's kind of nice. So what are the, what do the other three do? You got 20 year old. Is she in college? Yeah, so my my second daughter, the twenty year old's still in college. Yeah, she's going to be going to Florida State. Um, she's transferring to Florida State. My son is down in Miami, uh, going to school, and my daughter is uh, my second oldest is studying Chinese medicine and acupuncture. Okay. So yeah. Hey. Okay. Interesting. How did she get into yeah. that? Wow. You know. Really, if we go back, uh, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, right? You know, so from the beginning, my family is entrepreneurial. So my grandmother owned a health food store, and I grew up working in this health food store. And it was really one of the first. uh, They dubbed her Grandmother Nature. Uh This is in Peoria, Illinois. And um, so she was always kind of our beacon for health food and understanding what's what's good for you she's like one of the first ones to introduce way back when organics and organic food and organic vegetables and stuff into kind of the uh the consciousness Uh, stores weren't doing this they weren't and um so anyway that is where it really it started from and uh, she used to do uh, foot reflexology. And so this is Hannah, my daughter, is it would be her great grandmother. But she lived until she was 96 and put a big imprint on her. And she's kind of following in the footsteps of holistic health uh, and Chinese medicine. It's it's really amazing to see. She's uh, really uh, loves it and uh, is excited to become uh, an acupunctural doctor interesting yeah. the acupuncture freaks me out but i don't like needles i do Very. now <laughs> you do now my daughter doesn't actually do it but i started to go to acupuncture and really I, it it's amazing the the effects of acupuncture really do help i i was having problems with my hip pop 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 and not totally gone but definitely has reduced the pain in my hip so there are benefits um, that, that I think will hopefully continue to, um, show their, their way through our n- typical medicine. Um, I hear to, about um, them. I read about them. I still don't like needles. I still don't like needles. What was the, what was the most impactful thing that you learned from your grandmother? Good question. You know, it's, it's, it, this is one of those things. It's kind of like, what, what did you learn from, um, like your father or your mother? It, it's, it, I kind of don't know where. I begin and she ends, right? And same with dad. Um, you, you know, uh, very practical in business. Um, you know, making decisions for the right reasons, not mm-hmm. not to just make a buck. Um, right. Those are the kind of things that she was about. And, uh, and helping people. You know, every day I am blessed and glad that I am now in an industry, in the pharmacy industry, 
helping people that are visually impaired, it's a family thing, first of all, or individuals that are in need. And we get phone calls all the time of people that say, you saved my life. And um, you look at yourself in the mirror. Well, I bet your day you didn't say, suck that day, did it? It didn't suck. No. Nope. <laughs> it, it, it does. Be walking it around a little lighter. Days. Yeah, it's good. Well, I mean, it, it adds, <laughs> I mean, you already know you're doing incredible work, but I mean, that's just kind of the, uh, you know, the, the, self-worth that's like yes i'm i'm doing that and it's acknowledged and people are noticing and they appreciate it yeah it's like when we run yeah. into somebody and they're like you saved my business mm -hmm. you're like okay i'm walking a little lighter uh, you know I'm, that I'm doing makes a you feel today. good yep uh, and you and i'll tell you what you guys have a great product your, your products are great i i really am happy that we're integrated now with pioneer and um you know one of the things that a lot of companies, uh, at least, you know, some of the larger uh, pharmacy softwares do is they charge an arm and a leg. I, I'm here to say that a lot of people love your software. and It's good stuff. It really is. And it's easy. It was easy for us to work with your team to actually make it all work and finish. Um, uh, Tony Cox over there and, and others that have really helped us get things implemented it's, that's the goal. It's easy. Cool. Yeah. That's the goal. So how was, uh, how did this year of COVID look for you guys? You know, we did good. We uh, really, we, we were, we grew, you know, we grew through 2020. Um, I'm pretty proud that, that, you know, sales were fairly steady. You know, that's the nice thing about pharmacy too, is that even through COVID, you know, pharmacy was is that important to people that i think generally the pharmacy industry did the same or better um than 2019 so um we stayed steady yeah um we, we didn't we didn't grow but um now it's kind of coming back with a vengeance i'm, I'm just here to say that july was one of my busiest months that I've ever had wow. just the amount of uh, amount of flying pieces going around and uh, just you kind of spin and say well that day's over uh, let's go back at it tomorrow <laughs> what, <laughs> what kind of presence are you guys going to have at NCPA I'm hoping it's going to be big they said the registration is up 40 percent yeah but um, yeah. everyone's ready vendors to pack those are bags. down you know some especially large vendors uh, still aren't letting their people travel to, so exactly. so it's going to be way more people customers less vendors yeah sounds exciting so yeah so we're getting yeah. excited about it we, we're hoping that uh this new delta surge doesn't uh change that yeah we we sure do too because uh you know it it now is beginning to put a little scare in people and uh my uh, stepsister got COVID and she was in a induced coma um, just to make the mm -hmm. respirator work. She's 47. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. It's yeah. still affecting people, um, you know, and she wasn't vaccinated. Yeah, it's crazy. And, a lot of people, though, are seeing that now and getting vaccinated. Thank goodness. Yeah. yeah I mean, a lot of the I, press that's coming out, and thankfully there's finally some positive press. I mean, I, not really positive, but still it's reinforcing the getting vaccinated because a lot of doctors are saying that right before they, you know, are having to put the tube down the patient's throat, they're like, I can't, can I have the vaccine now? I feel like it's too late. Too late. Yeah. 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 Well, there was yeah. some uh, social media guy who was uh, nine days ago was saying, oh yeah, I got COVID and that's just a cold and I was right. I shouldn't have got vaccinated and then died yesterday, you know? That kind oh of people starting to see more and more of that, and hopefully they're going, yeah. okay, I shouldn't have been listening to him. You know, I need to get yeah. the vaccine. Yeah, I, you know, her husband had it also and wasn't affected. It was, it was just a, you know, bad flu, and she um, really was affected badly. Everybody's different, mm -hmm. and we all, we, we all need to get that vaccine. And that, again, harkens back to how important pharmacy is. Um, yes. To, to, to the to the nation to actually get these things done. Yep. Well, more importantly, also to you know start thinking as pharmacy more 
you know, I can walk in and get a vaccine there. I don't have to make an appointment with my doctor and then sit in a, in a lobby for 30 minutes and mm-hmm. when I can just walk into my pharmacy and say, yeah, vaccine, give me. Yeah, so I need to ask you, you guys started this podcast and I love the podcast and I have well, listened you. to a lot of, lot of them. There's a, there's a lot of them out there. It takes a little while to get through them. <laughs> um, but really interesting stuff. Did you, I just have to ask, did you start this as a result of COVID and not having a typical situation so, or did you start it even before COVID? That would we, be a we great started, spin. We started it during COVID because trade shows weren't happening. Right. And this is where we have our conversations and it's like, hey, how's it going? And I haven't, wow, that's amazing. You know, we were missing that and yeah. missing those connections. And some of it, we would actually travel to pharmacies and visit with them and see what they're doing and how they're doing it. And we learned so much. And so this was kind of our trade show replacement in a way, I think. Um, nice move. And it's great content. Yeah, I know. We, and we enjoy it. It's, uh, you know, I miss a lot of the, you know, one of my biggest shot in the arms is that going to trade shows and talking to people and them saying, hey, you saved my business or them saying this is going on or that's going on. It's just, you know, you sit back here away from that and you lose track. And I always mm-hmm. come back from a trade show or a customer visit and Twice as focused, twice as new ideas, energize. That's where I get fed. And um, the podcast feeds some of that. And you get to learn a lot of neat people and help build relationships and really just trying to to integrate people that that move and and kind of push pharmacy forward. Well, and also help elevate them too as well. Um, Because there's, I mean, some people we've talked to and they're like, no, I don't know who Amina is. And it's like, how do you not know Amina? Everybody knows and loves Amina. And she's doing so much and you can learn from her. You know, so it's really about helping elevate you guys and um, what you're doing in your business and how some of the, your ideas and concepts could help other people maybe move their business. Yeah, I always get surprised. We got contacted by a North Carolina senator, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, who was writing that was a, the coolest. Who was writing a, a house, sorry. Mm-hmm. So who was writing a, uh, a bill. And had watched our podcast and was asking us how that new pharmacy bill was affected by the software and trying to get our advice in writing the bill. So it, you're always surprised at the number of the, the people who listen to the podcast. And so. Yeah. And get ideas from from you. I love podcasts. So I'm, I'm a big podcast consumer. Nice. So what is your favorite podcast? Outside of ours. Wow. Aside from us. Yeah. <laughs> Besides this us. Is at the, this is at the top of the feed. We don't want to cheat. Um, well, I, I listen to uh, a ton of technology podcasts. I listen to, um, you know, This Week in Google. I listen to, um, um, drawing a blank now, but yeah, there's there's a ton of different ones that I listen to. So what, did you um, have a technology background outside of, of doing this? Well, not really. I think it was just a, I've got this weird gene that tells me that I can do anything. <laughs> I like you know, that. that. That, that I, that I, I, if I, if I put enough time to it, I can, I can figure it out. It's not that hard. And, um, so that's probably where it comes from, but I leave the technology now side to, to others. They take care of it. Um, but, uh, what generally that it's more just the ideas and and kind of now mobilizing our um, our software and hardware people to do the right things and move the right direction. Um, one of the things that we just did recently is now we uh, we have what's called an agile um, agile software development. So we do sprints and we do daily scrums. And I get into these scrum meetings and I see these technology. Uh, you know, amazing engineers, software engineers, hardware engineers that are kind of going back and forth. And I, it, it, it warms my heart Nice that, that guys like that are, and gals like that are out there doing what they do because, you know, I'm the days of that clunky laptop. Remember? Right. Yep. I'm, the, I'm that guy that maybe knows a little basic, but mm-hmm. that's about all. That's about all. Huh. Very, Very cool. good. Well, we are at our hour. We are. It's been a pleasure. It's nice. Uh, Marcia, uh, 
I remember early on, Marsh was like, oh, I want to have them on the show. That's so cool. She still just thinks that's that's the coolest thing. So she was a big fan of having you on here. And Well, I'm so excited, and I'm so happy to, that you guys asked me, and you guys are uh, a great company. Um, I, I do miss you guys at the trade shows. Yep, we'll make sure we we'll get by you. and say hi. Absolutely. Yes, and uh, please. surely you'll be several deep with, with people trying to get, and we'll we'll just reach over somebody's head and say hi. So, well, the, <laughs> and the last day we'll come say hi, probably. <laughs> the yeah. last day yeah. always. Usually it's, it's yeah. easier the last day yeah. to make our it, rounds. It's funny. It's like and... the, always the last day is slow. If it's four days, the last day is slow. If it's three days, the last day is slow. It's just always the last day is mm-hmm. slow. So. That's All right. right. Well, take care, and thanks again. Thank you so much. Thank you. All nice right. talking to you guys. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for watching the Catalyst Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and or following us. Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts to help us reach more amazing pharmacy people like you. Follow Pioneer RX on your preferred social media platform for the latest up-to-date pharmacy news and content.